Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another gear review. As promised, today we're going to go over the Ice Trekkers crampons. These are the crampons that Sharon and I used on our through hike that actually worked. So, let's get right into it. As always, the features of first. <coughs> 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 Feature uh, number one, rubber and steel. Hmm. There's a feature for you. It is made of rubber and steel. Nice. <coughs> Feature number two, shoe grips designed to provide aggressive traction in winter walking conditions. <coughs> a feature number three, they're made of case-hardened steel alloy and strung on steel aircraft cables. Very strong, uh, very sturdy. <coughs> Feature number four. They're riveted through tough rubber slings that fit tennis shoes, boots, or dress shoes. So just in case you're going to a ball and you want to wear your spikes, you can do that. <coughs> Feature number five, the slings remain elastic even in sub-zero temperatures and keep grips secure. Nice. <coughs> Feature number six, the self-cleaning design prevents snow and ice buildup. It's good. There it is. That's all of the features. And these actually are just uh, about the product from the website. They actually don't have a features list like a lot of the other products that I've been doing. So I just kinda, I, I winged this one. But that's what it says. And now it's time to break down these features into, well, words that everybody can understand and my opinions on this product. <clears throat> nice. Well, getting right into it, these actually worked. That's thumbs up for me right there. Um, on the AT, we tried uh, the Yak Track Pros, which just didn't have the durability. These do. Now, there are some downsides, some pros and cons that I'll go over, but for the most part, if you are looking for a pretty inexpensive. I think that uh, they were about $40 from the website, but through like an Amazon or Moose Jaw or something like that, you can get them for, for like $20. So they're fairly inexpensive and they do last. Now, they're not indestructible. Don't, don't think that they're always going to be there. Um, I've seen some reviews of people saying that they last, uh, mine broke after about six months. So if you use them a lot, they are not going to last forever, but they do last long enough for like an AT through hike. Even though they're inexpensive, they are a little bit heavy. Um, as for a pair, they're about three quarters of a pound. So when you start adding that weight to your feet, um, they say every pound added to your feet is like 10 pounds on your back. So wearing these over a long period of time is going to be, you know, a little bit harder on you. So the nice thing about these in particular is they pop off and on very easy. So you can go from walking in ice, have them on. If the ice goes away, pop them off, just carry them. And then once it comes back, pop them right back on again. They work well that way. <clears throat> They advertise as this being a completely unique design and they're a one of a kind and no one else is doing that. Not true. <laughs> I found a couple different variations of this same diamond grip design, but um, I think they may have been the first to kind of uh, to bring it out, but there definitely are some, some other variations out there and I think even Yak Tracks themselves do a, do a similar kind of uh, spike that's not like the micro spikes. Okay, let's get into some pros and cons. What I like and what I dislike about these, we'll do a quick rating and then we'll get this out for you guys. Pro number one, they're affordable. Like I said, 
at twenty to forty dollars depending on where you get them that's not bad for a piece of gear that is going to do its job i also like the fact that they do work that's always a good thing they will give you good traction through ice and even mud and slush and a variety of different conditions they do well to give you good traction they come on and off of your feet very easily um, unlike some of the other versions these ones hook them on your toe and flip them over the heel of your boot and they're on grab one spot on the heel of them and just give them a tug and they pop right off <laughs> Now let's go over a couple of the things that are not my favorite about these. these. Uh, number one on my list of cons is the fact that they are case hardened steel, which is good. They're not going to wear, um, but if you, if, any, if you know anything about steel, they're not stainless steel. They will rust. So my first suggestion when getting a pair of these is once you wear them, make sure you either dry them properly or you're conditioning them uh, somehow, like a, a WD-40 or any other kind of rust proofing if you're just using oil. I know some people, I've read a couple reviews that actually store them in like some old more old motor oil uh, to keep them from rusting and pop them on, walk around, do whatever you're gonna do and then always like condition them a little bit because they will rust very quickly. On the trail, ours got pretty rusty. Now, this doesn't affect the way that they work. They still work well, but as most people know, rust will weaken the steel and eventually those cables, if they get very rusty, that hold them together can break. And along with the fact that they can break, that's another uh, con of mine. They're not into. Shut up. They're not indestructible. These things over time are going to wear and are going to break. Um, the rivets that hold the the chains onto the rubber. Uh, I've seen people have the rubber break there and the rivets pop out. Um, there's a variety of different things that can go wrong. I think uh, by keeping them from rusting, they're going to last longer. And overall. Um, not wearing them constantly, taking them off when you need to and putting them back on will probably extend the life. Another con, they are heavier than some of the, the other ones you can get on the market. They are a little bit heavier. The fit on these can be a bit challenging. Um, I would suggest if you're going to order them, get them through a place that is going to allow you to do returns. And if they don't fit properly, return them and get the right size, whether they're too tight and they don't go on and on, ease, on and off easily, um, or they're too loose and you need a smaller pair. From the website, they say that they're fitted more towards shoes and that if you're wearing boots to bump yourself up one size. The ones that we got on the trail, Sharon's in particular, were loose enough that yes, they came on and off very easily, but the back of the heel would actually be able to stretch enough to come off the back of the boot. So because of fit, they, they, they were able to kind of slide around and she needed a little bit tighter, um, a tighter pair. On the AT, we didn't have a chance to, uh, to send, send them back and get new ones. We just went with it because even though it came off the back, the front stayed on, the grip was still there and they still performed which is another plus for these, that even if they don't work, you know, if they are able to slide off a little bit, they still don't break and they still don't come completely off. Another con with them fitting too loosely, if they don't fit tight enough onto your shoe, this so-called like self-cleaning does not work. So if they're, if they're loose fit, you'll get clumps of snow and ice that can build up on them, adding more weight, um, making you more clumsy, uh, your feet feel cumbersome so when you're stepping you'll tend to maybe trip a little bit more often because you've got these balls of ice and snow hanging off of your feet. Also something that um, I actually read in a comment that I didn't experience because I was wearing boots, uh, these are advertised to wear on all types of shoes, even dress shoes, it says right on the website. Because these diamond grips are circular, there's the same aggressive texture on the bottom of the grips as is on the top. So if you put a very um, a very nice shoe inside, the aggressive grip that grips the ground is the same aggressive grip that's gonna grip the bottom of your shoe. And I think over time could easily damage um, some softer uh, shoes. So that's something to consider with these as they're probably better for boots and uh, 
and sneakers and stuff, I wouldn't suggest wearing these on a really nice pair of shoes. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Quick and straightforward to the point. These, I give a about a oh, 7 out of 10. There's enough good features for these that they're a positive buy. They do work, but because they rust, um, and through rusting, they're prone to breaking. The fit's a little challenging, and a couple of those other cons that I talked about, I can't give them a great rating, but they are inexpensive, so I mean, you get that uh, seven out of 10. Um, I suggest for through hikers, because a lot of through hikers realize that your equipment is uh, disposable. After the through hike of the AT, a lot of your stuff is gonna be no good anymore. These are a good buy, but not that expensive, and they do work. But remember, in these reviews, this is just my opinion, and if you don't like it, you can go take a hike. Bye-bye.